Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to our next talk. It's about building progressive web app powered by Firebase. Welcome, Poetas, uh, Firebase Google developer expert from Brazil. All right, let's do it. Uh, you guys can hear me well? Is that good? Great. So, okay, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Firebase and progressive web apps. Uh, well, my Twitter handler and also my Instagram is Horace PAF, also my uh, Gmail. So if you have any further questions after the talk, you can also reach me out. And I would like to, f uh, to ask you a favor. So go to this uh, URL. Uh, this is the, the app that I've been building using Angular and Firebase. So if you go there uh, and you can log in with your uh, social account, uh, you can delete this later, don't worry. <laughs> and so I'm going to have like some demos, so if you can help me later, it's going to be nice. So it's, you know, Firebase real time, so everything like popping out, it is going to be really nice. All right, let's do it. So I'm born in Brazil, but currently I'm living in Dublin and I, I work for ERS and I really like to travel. So, uh, yeah, a little bit. So <laughs> this is like a, a really nice cool feature from uh, Google Maps. It's called Timeline. Uh, and you can see like where you went and where the place that you, go, you went. And it's really nice and nice to see that I, I have more dots in Europe than in Brazil. So I, I'm quite traveling a little bit. Um, yeah, so at ERS, we work with .NET and Angular. We have also opening uh, jobs if you want to move to Dublin, <laughs> you know. Uh, just let me know. I'll be at the uh, after party as well. If you want to reach out and talk a little bit about the opening positions, feel free to ask. Okay, so when we think about uh, development in general, we have lots of things to do. Our life is quite busy, and to be honest, I really, really like to-do lists. And I started with Google Keep. Uh, it wasn't this version with Material Design, it was like the previous one. So uh, we also have the Google Task now. If you didn't try, you could try. It's, it's really nice, and they have for Android and iPhone. I don't know why they don't have uh, for web. They have this integration with other Google products but you can't use like a standalone in the browser. Another nice to-do list that I've been using is Microsoft To-Do. Uh, they have for the all platforms and also for the web, uh, you can try later. Uh, and it's quite nice because they also have this kind of intelligent thing that if you didn't complete your task, they are going to ping you and say, hey, it's time to complete your task, this kind of stuff. So, uh, like, a few months ago, I decided to start something, like a project to, to build and give back to our community. So, okay, what, what can I do uh, to, you know, give a project and start to work on that? And I, I uh, asked this guy, that his name is Chris, and he's also a Firebase Google Developer Expert. And we decided to create this full stack Firebase course. And everything starts well, but I couldn't deliver the course. So the idea was to, to have two cores, one in React and another in Angular. But the great part is that he did the job and he delivered the course. So if you are interested in React and Firebase, we have a course for you. And related to Angular, you know, bear with me. Maybe next year I'll be there with the course. Um, so everything that we are doing or we are uh, putting in this how to Firebase inside of GitHub. So you can see like the Angular app, the React app, and also the documentation. So, uh, and also for example, if you have any, you know, like ideas for the to-do app, you can also place over there in the Firelist Angular. I'm trying to um, add in new features. I just had a feature to share uh, when you share a note with your friend, your friend is going to receive an email. So we are going to test in a moment. Hopefully it works. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we have the versions have of Angular. It's, uh, this talk is a little bit uh, also about Angular, so um, I'm going to have some stuff related to Angular, but when it's not, I'm going to say to you and you can use other things. So basically, uh, to start a project, the easiest way with Angular is to use the Angular CLI. And if you are a developer, probably you had already heard about CLI, right? And CLI is going to make your life really, really simple. But if you are not, uh, if the terminal is not your best friend, you can use uh, this Angular console. It's a really nice project, and you can download. They have a stable version, and basically, you have this uh, UI that you can go there, create uh, new projects, install dependencies, and everything is uh, with a UI, nice to, and simple. And uh, it's really easy to follow instead of go to the terminal and type every single command. I like to go to the terminal, but if you don't, that's good that we have that. And then we have this engineer. You just start a project. And now we have some questions that you can answer and speed up your development process. So if you like to, to use less, you can go there and change the configuration. If you need the routing, you go there and you say yes and this kind of stuff. It's really interesting. So another thing that you need to be aware when you are developing is unit testing, right? So unit testing is uh, probably you heard about TDD, right? And sometimes we're, okay, I'm going to start with testing tomorrow and we don't do it. <laughs> and then next week, okay, let's try it and nothing. So what I really like about the Angular CLI is that they generate the specs for you. So when you are creating anything else, anything new, like components, modules, services, whatever, they uh, create for you the, the basic uh, spec, and you can follow, and you can see here, you know, like everything using Jasmine and Karma. So it's easy to start. They also have end-to-end -end testing with Protector, uh, but I don't like that much protector. What I really recommend is Cypress. So if you have any kind of web app or website, you can use Cypress. Cypress is a really, really uh, nice end-to-end -to -end tool. They have, uh, you can install in your projects with npm install Cypress, or you can download the standalone app, and they have for Mac, Linux, and Windows. And it's pretty powerful, so if you want to try something different related to end-to-end -end test, I highly recommend uh, Cypress. Well, one, uh, one thing that I really like to do is when I'm developing, I'm using like custom host names. So for example, with Angular CLI, I just define that host over there, and I say, oh, hey, I'm going to use firelist.angular. And after that, of course, we need to change the at, at etc hosts. And when using Firebase, you also need to change uh, and use the add domain functionality inside of Firebase. I'm going to show later, later on, but that's what you need to do. So this is the uh, like kind of initial version of the project that I've, building, I've been building. And I just changed some stuff, put the Firebase logo. And also, what I'm trying to do is for every single feature that I'm publishing, I'm trying to create this pull request with more information, uh, image, and everything, so you can learn uh, also following the, the pull request. And of course, if you are using any kind of framework, one of the best things for you to do is to read the documentation. And I know sometimes, as you know, who, who, who really likes to read documentation? Nobody, right? <laughs> but if you read the documentation, you're going to learn uh, other things that you couldn't learn without reading it. So just for a recap in, in terms of starting the project, go with Angular CLI, be curious, test is indispensable, and please read the documentation. Some results for you later on. And just for a starter, I'm going to show you here um, so here I have the, the app, right? Okay, let me close this thing here. 
And for started, we have like these dependencies in the package JSON, right? This is the Angular things here, some um, animation, CDK, uh, PWA. Uh, you can see like over there, it's okay? Okay, great, perfect. And we have some dev dependence that's just for testing and other things. So this is the package JSON file that we need. And then I'm, I'm starting to uh, testing some kind of certificates and other things more, a little bit more advanced. And the entire project is inside of this app um, folder here. So one of the initial things that we need to do to enable um, authentication is to create this component. And basically this component, as you could see when you go uh, to the app, we have some buttons here. And basically we connect with the different um, social networks. And we, when we connect with Google, for example, we just request to the authentication service, this guy here, sign in with Google. So inside of this authentication service, we have some methods here and the sign-ins here. So basically, we have like each provider that Firebase can handle, and Google is here, and we sign in with that provider, and later on, we just uh, do some redirection and error renderer. So this is a, like the initial thing that we, we need to do for a first step with uh, authentication. So in terms of progressive web apps, it's um, probably you heard about it. It's also really nice because the Angular CLI, they have this NEG ad at Angular slash PWA. And with this in place, you can uh, have the uh, progressive web apps capabilities. In terms of progressive web apps, the basic three things that you need is a service worker, a manifest JSON file, and run your website or your web app with uh, SSL. So there's three things you can accomplish. So let's see here what we can do. So once again, when you're using the CLI, it makes your life easier. Why? As you can see here, the CLI created some files and also updated like other files. So if you want to do this manually, it's kind of, you know, like, oh, come on, it's boring. But the Angular CLI does this for you. And also, uh, in terms of Angular, if you want to, uh, you know, go a little bit deeper inside of the Angular CLI, they have the schematics, and you can learn more about this later. And of course, we have documentation for it. <laughs> and here, uh, like the two main files that we need related to uh, progressive web apps. On the left side, we have the NEGSW configuration. This is basically for service worker. So it's a little bit more advanced, but you can check all the configurations that you need. And the manifest JSON, if you have any website or web app and you don't have a manifest JSON file, you can create just after my talk, not now, <laughs> but you can create uh, just after my talk and it's going to give you a lot of benefits related to uh, progressive web apps. So as you can see there, the, we have some uh, attributes and one of the most important is the display one. So the display, you can go with standalone or full screen or other variations, but standalone and full screen, they are the main recommendations. And also the icons that you drop there and you're gonna uh, uh, have the, the icons for different device. And in terms of web app manifest, uh, go to the documentation as well. I don't know, can you count like how many times I'm going to say documentation? <laughs> so, <laughs> And after that, you just need to test your uh, app with NEG Build Prod, other uh, frameworks or other CLIs they do in a different way, and you go to the CD and then you can test. So with this in place, uh, I'm using here the HTTP server, and with this in place, you can test with the Chrome Dev Tools, and they have the service worker here, and you, know, you can play around just to see how your app is going to react to uh, the, the network. And this is a uh, PWA rocks. If you want to see more uh, applications that are using this uh, PWA thing, you can go there. 
So basically, one great thing about progressive abacts is that we have a uh, broad range of um, vendors accepting progressive ABAP. So for example here, it's uh, how we can run a progressive ABAP with the Mac OS. So the latest version of Chrome, they have this install progressive ABAP and you can install it and then it's going to be uh, an app inside of your Chrome apps and you can uh, open from there. But for that, is to, uh, you still need to enable the desktop PWAs flag. So as you can see here, we are pretty much covered with uh, PWAs. So that's one of the best benefits that you can have with your product to be installed in those uh, device or OS. And this is the, the behind flag that I'm showing here, the Mac OS. And also the, the ad is um, implementing this installation as well. So this is really powerful in terms of marketing, in terms of uh, engagement and other things. So just a recap here uh, for you to understand a little bit. So as you can see here, I told you three basic things, right? So it was like manifest JSON file, so the, the, the CLI covered that for us, and also the service worker, the CLI covered that for us. And related to SSL, we are going to be covered by Firebase. So let's go a little bit more of the code here. Let's go see here. So in terms of progressive web apps, we have this thing here, right? The index.html, and that's how you can um, add the manifest to your um, web app, right? So this is one thing that you need to do, right? And then we go to the uh, service worker configuration here. This is the file that you need to go and change if you need uh, for your customizations. You can um, so, uh, save more files here and do other strategies as well. Uh, one thing that I want to show here is that this display here, you can change for full screen or have other things here. And also, you need to be, uh, keep in mind that you need to use your theme color, your background color, Everything related to colors here is um, related to your application and also the assets that uh, you're going to use here. Okay, and that's pretty much what we need related to progressive web apps. It's really easy to do, really simple to add with the Angular CLI. And with Firebase, what you can do is go to console and then hosting your application as well. I, let me check here. I am not connected. Probably not. Okay. Connections problems. All right. Let's keep moving. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't connect to the Wi Fi and my um, hotspot not working. So, all right. And when you, when you need. Uh, UI, for example, right? So we have different options, but material design for me is the best. And it's not because I'm a Google developer expert, but because I really like uh, the material design concepts. And with Angular, it's also really, really simple to start. So you just go to the documentation one, once again, and <laughs> you can start with Angular material. And you have tons of components. Imagine that you would need to create this by yourself and you don't need. You just go there and you choose the components that um, you're gonna use inside of your application. And they have tons of components and it's really, really brilliant. And the, the version seven, they added this drag and drop. So if you, you know, are creating any application that you need drag and drop, you can use and also this uh, visual scrolling, virtual scrolling is really interesting for performance. So they just launched this with the version seven. And then you can go with the NPM install, but it's a little bit boring because you need to update your files and everything. Once again, schematics with NEG add, you can uh, go there and use material. It's simple and it's going to create all files for you. It's going to add um, 
update the files, and do everything that, that you need to do, you would need to do. With this in place, uh, just remember that's uh, only available for Angular 6 Plus. And for touchable screens, you need Hummer.js. So Hummer.js is a really, really powerful library that you can use um, with uh, touchable. So if you need to enable anything related to touchable, uh, you need to use Hummer.js with Angular. And we are using this in, in, at uh, ERS, and it's pretty brilliant. You can do a lot of things. We implemented the swipe left and right when you are using your mobile phone inside of our application. So definitely take a look later on. And with this in place, uh, what I like to do is to create a module to import all material uh, design components that I use. And this is pretty much uh, what you need to create a module and then import. And this is also like, a, I think is the second version. Oh no, it's the first version that I added from the material design. I was like playing around with the components. And if you want to check, you can go to stackblitz.com. Stackblitz.com is a really nice um, way for you to show your code or share your code with uh, friends or colleagues. And you just go there and you can start to play around and change things. It's pretty powerful. And if you want to start something new, you know, they, I, I found out this project, <laughs> and it's brilliant. Uh, it's called Angular NGRX Mature Started. And they have all functionalities that I, that I wanted to build my project even more. So if you want to start something new with Angular and Material Design, I strongly recommend you to uh, check this um, starter later on. So a little bit of a recap and more resource for you. So in terms of Material Design, what I have here, as I told you before, is this material module. I have all, all these components that I'm using here. So as you can see here, I'm using like cards, uh, the toolbar, the menu here to log out, um, this button here, float button to create new um, uh, notes. And even more, let's go here. So even more, I'm using other um, like icons from material icons, you know, and other components as well. So if you really want to um, have a, a like nice uh, application, because for example, let's say that you want to start a project, right? Just to, for example, um, start to playing with React. It would be nice if you could create something that would be beautiful instead of you know like default. <laughs> HTML and uh, so you can include material design. They have like the options for pretty much every framework that you're going to start with. So go for it. And okay, yeah, this is pretty much what I need to material module. And then you go to the uh, module that you are using. For example, I'm using the notes module here, and I have tons of uh, configurations as you can see. But one thing that you can do is create a shared module and include the shared module everything that you need uh, in terms of your application. So I'm importing like common things related to um, Angular here. So when I need to import in other modules, it's going to be easier. All right. So let's jump into Firebase. I don't remember how much time I have. Yeah, okay, sometimes good. <laughs> so when you create a new project with Firebase, you go to the dashboard and then you add the project to, um, you create a new project and you're going to be able to use with iOS, uh, Android, or web. Probably all of you heard about Firebase, right? Yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> So um, when we are thinking about web, we have so many things to you know, think about it. So what I li really like about Firebase is that you can use the infrastructure and it's going to be all handled by, uh, for you. So 
to add Firebase to our Angular app, you just need to install the Firebase CLI with this uh, yarn command or npm command, uh, adding the Firebase tools. And after that, it's simple to um, start using Firebase. So you need to uh, log in via terminal, and then Firebase init. It's going to create um, some configuration for you. You just need to choose what you want related to the products. And after that, this, the all setup is, is uh, created for you. So with this, we, we have two main files, the Firebase JSON and the Firebase RC, just to have the default configuration. So if you are working with other, um, because Angular, use, Angular CLI uses Webpack, if you're using something different, you need to change that public um, property over there. So energy build prod, Firebase deploy, and then you can test um, on the web with the hosting URL. So this is the URL that I gave you at the beginning of the presentation. So, and to use Firebase, we just need to use the Angular Fire. The Angular Fire is pretty nice. They have um, all things that you need related to Firebase for web. So at this moment here, I just want to play a little bit around with um, the app, and you can see some uh, nice things. So let me check if I, I think I'm not connected. So it's not going to be nice if I'm not connected. So let me try just connect here once again. Oh, that's now that it's it's not really connected. I don't know why, but it's not connected with the Wi-Fi here. But I have the hotspot. Let me check if I'm online again. I think I am online. So where are you? Okay. Oh Jesus. <laughs> okay. I think we are good to go. Yeah, I'm online. Okay. So. Now let's start doing some nice things here. So for example, uh, I have this DevFast Vienna here. I have no um, tasks yet, right? OK. All right. So here, um, my idea was to have like this to-do list inside of the notes. And you can you know, use other features, like, for example, sharing with friends. So I have here this email, and I send to this e uh, to this email here, and uh, this person is going to receive uh, an email. So if you created a note, you can share with me, and it's going to appear here. So if you go there and share with my email, that's like this one here. Oh come on. It's going to appear here. So who is going to share with me? Nobody? Come on, guys. I need your help now. Nobody? Seriously? No, you just go to the, you got the URL at the beginning? OK. All right, so you go there uh, to the notes, and you just click here, share with friends. Oh, you need to connect first. Okay, that happens. Come on, guys, you can do it. <laughs> okay, so the URL is uh, bit.li for a list dev. I think that's it. So, and then when you create, you can just create a new note here. And one thing that, that uh, is nice, as you can see here, we have this nice calendar uh, component that you can choose. I'm just like uh, disabling the uh, previous uh, dates because the idea is to have just for today or future. And one thing that I also added here it was the, the ability to uh, you know, out-complete here. So for example, university. Uh, Vienna, something like 
yeah so yeah that that's the the address that I went before but it was wrong so <laughs> okay so all right nobody shared yet oh, come on yeah you share as well okay that's great like live demos right <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I received the. E oh, come on! What's going on? No, it's not sh showing here. Let me go back here to the database and check. It's so nice. Okay, we have some notes here, and what I want to sh to show you here is when when you are dealing with. Um, Firebase, we have the Firestore, right? And the Firestore is one of the database inside of uh, Firebase. And it's really important for you to know that if you are dealing with sub-collections, you need to delete those sub-collections because uh, the sub-collections are treated as separated uh, things inside of Firebase. So to do that, uh, what you need to do is go here to the cloud functions oh my god I have the cloud functions here I want to show you this because it's really interesting as well for you to know so as you can see here it's really simple to um, use cloud functions uh, we had a uh, previous talk about cloud functions so it's going to be live later and you can check but basically what I'm doing here is deleting all to-dos, uh, the sub-collection. And uh, before, I, I had the uh, collaborators as a sub-collection as well. But I changed it because I, I wasn't doing that much with the collaborations. And then to send an email, it's pretty easy as well. So you can configure the email and password using um, cloud functions. Everything is inside of the, the repo, so you can go there and you can see like the steps here, one, two, three, and other things. So, but it's pretty basically with uh, the mail transport here, you just need to send email with the options. And what I'm doing here is basically uh, checking the notes. This is the document, right? I'm checking the notes, note ID here. So when, whenever everything, anything changes inside of the note, I get the previous note value, new note value. And what I do is basically check if the collaborator's array is great, uh, the length is greater than before. And if it's, it is, it's because somebody shared with uh, other person. And I can just go there and. Uh, I'm using this node <laughs> mode random here just for you to see like a uh, random emoji w w within the uh, subject. And I get the, the collaborator email from the, the, the node collaborators. So let me show you here. Oh. Uh, so I have the collaborators here, right? So I get the, the latest one. Yeah, I know. Like pretty small <laughs> okay better now so I have the array with the collaborators here and I get the latest one and with the latest one what I do is just I get this and I I get this object mail options here and I go with from to that specific collaborator and I have the subject hey you received an invitation with the random emoji and some text here showing also the the URL with the node ID so you can click there and uh, check the the note that just what sh shared with you so this is pretty simple and you know like step by step you can do other things my idea improve also this um, this function here to when you are logging into the system I'm going to send you a push notification instead. So this is the idea uh, for, a, uh, for a new feature, let's say. OK, so I have no idea why it's not working. 
I changed some stuff here late, uh, before my talk. That's, that's one thing that you shouldn't do it. <laughs> Let me try just once again with the, uh, yeah, this one here. Let me try. Aha, uh -huh. I got one here. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, so, well, you know, my local host is not working, <laughs> so that's a great thing, not publish this one, <laughs> but this one is working, that's, that's brilliant. Okay, so yeah, thanks for sharing, <laughs> um, and then Hello World is a great start. <laughs> so one thing here, as you can see, um, I can't delete because I'm not the owner, so um, it's the one thing that you can do as well to prevent some actions. In this case here, I have this uh, share with friends. I can share with, with a friend because I'm not like preventing. And I can change whatever I want here. So, for example, hello world, nice one. And then, you know, like, uh, great dev fest. And I can, you know, like, talk about PWA. And I can change pretty much everything here because um, I decided to add every, every function functionality but deleting. So this is one thing. For example, if I archive the note here, I'm not going to see, but I don't have the ability to see the archive note yet. So, you know, it's in progress. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, it's been great. Uh, I'm adding like some functionality that uh, it's, it's good for you to know and I think it's going to be really interesting to have this project like as open source and you can go there and you can see and if you have any ideas I, I'm, I'm really serious about that I would love to hear you can go to the repo add the issue, uh, issue there and I, I'm gonna check the, that issue and probably start doing some stuff there uh, okay, I have five minutes. Okay, five minutes is great. All right, so <laughs> let's keep moving on here. One thing that I want to show you is the um, note add component. So this note add component here, it's um, really interesting. So once again, is when you go here, right? And I want just to show you. I think I'm gonna sit a little bit. Um, so. Okay, all right, I just want to go directly to the part that uh, it's important. Okay, here. So after you, um, you know, type everything here, oh my God, here, I'm going to do some stuff and you can see here that I have this user doc. Firestore is really interesting that you can store a reference for another document. So in this case, I'm getting this reference here, and I'm saving on the database with this created by here. So later on, when I need to sh when I need to show the uh, any kind of property of my user of the user, I can get this created by here, and it's going to be a reference inside of the database. So I'll I'll be able to display any kind of information, and. One of the features that I want to do next is to enable um, localization. So you're going to be able to translate, uh, for example, from English to German. And this is one of the things that I need to have on your profile. So that's one thing that I need to, to have as well. So instead of duplicating everything, I'm just going here and getting the reference from that user and using here. So it's going to be uh, much more um, interesting for me to do that instead of, you know, like duplicating things. When you need to duplicate? Well, it depends. So, for example, here I have the owner, right? And I'm just using the UID because I'm going to check if you are that specific owner and I'm going to enable some features for you. So this is one thing that you need to keep in mind when you are um, dealing with database which kind of uh, information that I, that I need uh, and which kind of information that I don't need. So before I was storing 
the collaborators at a sub collection, but I was having a lot of problems, and I decided to to use as an array. So now every time that I that I need a collaborator, I just add uh, that specific user inside of the array. And as you can see here, this share with is to have your photo URL and your email directly here. Because even using reference, you are going to need to query the document. So just to keep simple, I'm duplicating data here. So in terms of uh, database, you really need to um, think about your feature, think about like the queries that you are going to do and other things. And then after that, I just go and return like the, 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 the model and save in the database. I mean, I'm starting to experiment with the geolocation as well. So as you can see, like loads of ideas, but not that much time to do it. <laughs> and the snack bar reference here is just to redirect the user when the, the note is created. So we have, um, so here, yeah, so what I'm testing here is the ordering. So I'm trying to order by um, date here. And when we don't have date, it's just getting lost, probably. So I'm going to check this, and I'm going to um, fix it tonight, maybe. <laughs> All right. I think I'm almost there. I changed it. Um, my idea was to like just uh, have the slides here with uh, all the things that I created, but you can check this later w w in more details. So that's why I'm changing to like showing uh, the things that I want to show uh, live, and then when you get home, you can go to the slides and check everything, every step. So we have the YouTube channel for Firebase, um, and you can check all the things there. If you want to know more about the program, uh, the alpha program, you can go to this URL. Don't take notes. You can see the presentation later on. Um, or you can talk to me and for more things related to Firebase. And they have great code labs. So if you want to learn about other products, go to the code labs. And one thing that I really like uh, related to quotes is this one. The first do it, then do it right, then do it better. That's what I'm trying to do with this you know, note app. I think I'm doing, I don't know, I think I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, and come on, let's have fun. You know, it's not only about um, development and uh, uh, acquiring new, new like, skills, but have some fun. And with that, thank you very much. I think we can still accept a couple of questions, so. Do you guys have any questions, girls? Come All on. Right. You are so shy today. <laughs> it's evening. <laughs> it's yeah, that's, evening. That's okay, Take it that's easy. Okay. Thank you, Horace. It was a great talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. We have a small present, like this Google Home Mini. Oh, wow. You can join. Tomorrow we have a workshop, just saying. So we'll have a short break until the next talk. Take your time. Thank you. <laughs>